So what I want to do here is just go over uh, a, a few more points for the um, uh, porous media problems. We saw how to uh, saw basically where the governing equations are coming from, and uh, this is an overview of really the things that you'll need to set up a problem. The governing equations, which we just saw, um, and then in addition, you'll need these things, boundary conditions, um, a set of properties, and to define uh, some sources. So here's the kind of the summary. There'll be two types of uh, dependent variables that you might use to, set, to solve these kinds of problems. One will be done in terms of hydraulic head, and the other is in terms of pressure. So if it's hydraulic head, then uh, the governing equations will look like this. The mass balance, there are here two versions of it. This is the steady version, and then you have a transient term right here that is um, uh, the, uh, the transient version of the mass balance. And then the momentum balance, which we saw last time, uh, gives us Darcy's law, uh, looks like this, where there's the gradient of the hydraulic head. And here are the, the properties that you need. The other form, uh, which is a, uh, uses pressure as a dependent variable. Hmm. Well, or not. Huh. I'm not quite sure what happened to it. So the, you can check out the, the check out the notes. Um, so. The other thing that we'll need to solve this is the um, initial conditions. So for transient problems, you need to say what the dependent variable is at the start. So the default is just going to be to say it's equal to zero. And this, this may be fine uh, for some applications. But for, for other applications, um, if you start at zero, that'll be, uh, that, that can be a long way from the actual initial conditions. And so if you, if you do that, then the first part of your analysis will be way off. So one of the things that we would do in that case is to, uh, to run a steady state problem and then use the initial or use the result of the steady state solution uh, to be the uh, initial condition for the transient problems. Um, so that's a, that's, a, that's a trick that we'll use for these um, well testing problems and that's a common thing that we'll use uh, really throughout the course. So the properties that you need to know, we just looked at it, uh, at some of them anyway, when we were looking at COMSOL, uh, the, the density permeability, G is, I think, um, pretty obvious, uh, dynamic viscosity and uh, the compressibility. The, the, the permeability and the hydraulic conductivity are, um, are related like this. This is permeability, little k, and this is hydraulic conductivity. So you have the ability to specify one or the other and there, you also need to have here the, the fluid properties, the density and the dynamic viscosity to translate between them. Um, for the saturated conditions, we'll assume that these are, um, these are constant and, um, uh, and independent of the pressure, but for unsaturated flow problems, uh, they will be uh, a function of the pressure, that'll add an additional complication. We're not working on those yet, but we will um, shortly. Okay, so uh, viscosity and density. We've, we're going to have to specify uh, this, and uh, it'll uh, depend what kind of fluid we're using. For a lot of the problems that you guys will be interested in, the fluid will be water, uh, and so we have a, um, here's a here's a table of different viscosities, and here's the um, uh, water viscosity in Pascal seconds, so 0.89 or 8.94 times 10 to the minus four. That's that's often rounded up to be just uh, 10 to the minus three 
Pascal seconds. Um, or, or that's equal to one centipoise. Um, there are a variety of other um, possibilities here, depending upon uh, you know if we're if we're interested in uh, in other fluids. Here's another table uh, that shows densities, uh, and also uh, you know depends on what we're interested in. Uh, here, the dynamic viscosity is shown over here on the right. Um, there are really two units of viscosity. The dynamic viscosity uh, has units of the basic units of po is poise here. Uh, 0.1 pascal second is one poise, so 0 0.001 is uh, one centipoise, um, and that's the property of water. The kinematic viscosity, um, which is the dynamic viscosity divided by the density, uh, that's really a more fundamental unit. That's what we use to get the, um, the, the momentum. That's like a, it has units, the same units as diffusivity, and we think of the kinematic viscosity as the, like a momentum diffusivity term. Uh, water is got uh, one centistoke is the kinematic viscosity and uh, it's 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. So meters squared per second we recognize as a unit of uh, diffusivity. Uh, and then density I think everybody's familiar with, uh, kilograms per uh, cubic meter. So those are the fluid properties that we'll need to know. Uh, the solid properties, uh, the um, permeability will be the thing that we'll need to specify, um, or the, the hydraulic conductivity, one or the other. Um, here's a range of uh, permeabilities uh, going from, well, the, the units of permeability, the, the units that we'll use, the um, SI units are meter squared, and so they're ranging from uh, let's see, a, a fairly high permeability for gravel is uh, here around 10 to the minus 9 um, meters squared. And as it drops down, uh, here's, let's see, uh, a, a unweathered marine clay. That's pretty low permeability stuff, and that's about uh, there, 10 to the minus 19. So it's varying there over 10 orders of magnitude. Um, and you can see in, in shales, uh, these, are, these are some permeabilities of rocks. Uh, you could get even lower than 10 to the 19. So you see shale, see how it's down here at the low end? That's what everybody's heard of fracking, right? And that, this is the reason why fracking is, uh, is an important uh, process because shales have this, this very low uh, permeability fluid flows through them very slowly um, unless you uh, create some fractures. So the other thing, the last thing, is uh, compressibility. And we need compressibility for uh, the storage term in the, um, in the governing equation in the mass conservation. And um, we'll need a compressibility for the fluid and we need a compressibility for the aquifer. Uh, for the solid materials. And uh, here are some, some numbers uh, for, these are all, well, here's water. Uh, that's the, um, the, the, the SI units in uh, one over Pascal. So compressibility, you can think of it as a volume change per unit volume. So like a fractional volume change that occurs with, per unit of pressure. So um, you, get, you get that fraction, that's a pretty small fraction, uh, per Pascal. But you know, Pascal is a pretty small unit of pressure. Um, and for comparisons, here are uh, compressibilities of different porous media. And you can see a plastic clay ranges 10 to the minus 6, to minus 7. So it's several orders of magnitude um, larger than water uh, and all of these really all of these materials here have higher 
compressibilities, they're more compressible than water is. And so that's important because when you, when you pump or when you change the pressure in a porous media, you get water out of storage because of the compressibility of the fluid and the compressibility of the porous medium. Because the, the compressibility of the porous medium is higher than the fluid, then it, it really tends to dominate the, um, the, the ability really of water or of fluids to, um, the ability of us to change the storage of fluids in, in this material. So you drop the pressure, the storage changes, and that results in you removing fluid or putting fluid into this material. Okay, so these, uh, these terms are, um, it's, it's chi, and I think it's chi for fluid, and chi uh, C, I think, for the, for the formation. And so those are uh, terms that you need to specify. Okay, so those are the properties. Uh, and then here are some examples. And I think these are what you've been working on uh, for homework. So uh, that's just a, a little bit extra uh, background material that hopefully maybe fills in a little bit of, of gaps that you might have for when you've been working on these, uh, these problems here.